For this next lesson, I opened up a sample file called Peel and Blend. And what we have here is uh, an open channel that we need to mill through and an open end that we need to mill off. So I've already uh, set everything up in properties as far as my tool settings and as far as my stock size. You should all be pretty good at that by now, so set yours up. And um, we have some wireframe geometry that's already defined in this as well. There are some orange edge curves for the paths that we're going to follow. We could chain it from the solid, but I just thought it'd be easier to chain right from the wireframe. So I'm going to go to Tool Paths, 2D High Speed, and we're going to start with the Peel toolpath. I'm going to go with the default name for the NC program, and we're set to Wireframe Chaining, and I'm going to pick this chain. Make sure you're picking it from the end. I'll rotate around, and I'll pick this chain in here. So basically we have two chains, and those two chains form a channel, and we need to mill through that channel. And you can kind of get an idea just by looking at the peel mill icon. You can see it's doing a series of looping cuts. Basically it loops its way along, peeling the material out of the channel. So we're going to go select our tool, and we should already have a half inch flat end mill in here and we're going to add a comment. And I'll say peel mill the channel for my comment. Let's take a look at our cut parameters. So these parameters look a little bit different than the area and the core milling. So we have the first thing here is rough offset. This is if you want to leave some offset material on the inside of the channel. And the reason you might leave that offset material is if you wanted to take a finish pass. So you could turn on finish pass and then it would cut that offset material away. If not, it'll leave that material on the part. You also have stock to leave on walls. Now the difference is if you tell it to leave stock on the walls, even if you do a finish pass, it will still leave this stock on the walls. But if I set this to 0 and set this to 50 and tell it to do a finish pass, then it will cut the part to the actual finish size. And that's actually what we're going to do for this lesson. So I've got an offset in here of 50 thousandths for the finish cut. Stock to leave on walls is 0. And stock to leave on floor is 0. Then we have the rounding radius. This is how it's going to loop onto the profile. We have our step over amount, which is how much it's going to step up per cut. And I think we'll set this to 150. Now the back feed rate is when it's rapiding back for the next starting cut, how fast do you want it to move? So I'm going to tell it that the back feed rate, I want 300 inches per minute. Now that's actually a point when it's cutting air. It's already cut across and now it's going to wrap it to the starting point for the next loop. Now when it comes across and is feeding to the next start point you can also tell it to do what's called a micro lift. This will tell it to lift up off the part so you're not dragging the bottom of the tool. Even though the sides of the tool are not in contact the bottom of the tool would be in contact. So I want it to lift up off the floor by 30 thousandths. And then we have our ramp length. And the ramp length is how long of a move it'll make when it's moving up for that 30 thousandths distance. Okay, we also have depth cuts, which is pretty self-explanatory. If you want to take multiple depth cuts going down, you can turn that on. We're just going to take it in one long length of cut. Breakthrough, if we were actually cutting through the part, you might want to turn on your breakthrough and set a value. But we are going to a specific depth. Our channel has a specific floor depth. And then we have our linking parameters, which is where we actually do tell it the depth we're cutting to. 
Right now the depth is set incrementally in relationship to the geometry we picked. So it's a distance of zero from the geometry that we picked. And we'll say OK to this. Now we get a warning. And I specifically chose this part because we do get a warning. I want to explain that a warning is not the same as an error. An error is telling you that something is wrong with your toolpath. A warning is telling you that you may want to examine your toolpath because there may be something that might be of concern to you. This says peel mill cuts are not perpendicular to the chains or they reverse direction suddenly. A gouge may result. Use back plot, quick verify. A smaller rounding radius or tool may be required. So it's telling us that we're going to generate the toolpath, but you're going to want to go back and look at this. So let's OK that. And there's our toolpath. 